pre-calculus, what's going down? We are currently living in log land. We're learning about logarithms. We've been very analytical to this point with x's and y's, and we haven't given it a lot of context. We can solve equations. We can use the log laws. We can do all that. But what does it mean for us? What does it mean in the real world? When can I see this? So we're going to answer that question today. And how we answer that question, like a lot of math things, is with word problems. we got to put context to this stuff. So um, let's start with a little easy one. Um, where I just give you the equation, there is a new website out there called MrEdwardsMath.com. Um, you can subscribe to it for free. I'm making this up. It's not real. This is just to make up a problem. But my subscription for this website can be modeled by this equation, where T is how many days have passed, and S are how many subscribers there are. So let's write that equation down. Boom. And then let's use that equation and answer some questions. Here are the three questions. How many subscribers are there after two months? Sorry, I think I said days. I meant months. How many subscribers are there after two years? And then finally, how many months would it take for me to get to the one million subscriber mark? That's what I'm looking for. So here's our equation. We have the three things we're looking for. Let's go through and, and find them. So the first one was after two months, how many subscribers are there? Okay, so that's 1.7 times 1.9 to the second power. We can just jam that in our calculator, and we get 1.7, 1.9, to the second power, 6. Sad face. Well, it's only been out for two months, and there's only six subscribers. I need to get the word out. Okay, so um, what about two years? The only thing that changes now is instead of two months, two years, that would be 24 months. I'm going to do the same equation, 1.7. This is going to show you guys exponential growth to the 24th power. A lot. 8,327,897 subscribers. It's taken off, okay? That's how exponential growth works. It may start off slow, but eventually the thing is going to take off. Um, a lot. And then finally, the last one. How many months would it take? What does T have to be so that I get a million subscribers? Okay, so... I'm just going to take subscribers out and replace it with a million. That's not too bad. 1.7, 1.9 to the T. This is the type of thing we just got done taking a quiz on. You guys are going to take a quiz on here in about two hours. I'm going to divide by 1.7. I'm going to take the log of both sides. Log of 1 million over 1.7 equals... If I take the log of 1.9t, that t that's an exponent can be multiplied out front, t times log of 1.9. Finally, we would just divide by log of 1.9, divide by log of 1.9. This is the, the exact answer. That's an exact expression. But then when we jam it into our calculator, we would get what t is, and that's how many months have passed how many months it took for me to get to a million subscribers. Right about at 20.7 months. Not bad. Really, it's solving these equations, it's jamming things into the equations. Um, what made that one nice was the equation was already given to me. Bam, there's the equation. But that's not always the case. Sometimes we just know what's happening. We have the data. I, I can see this thing is starting to grow exponentially, but we don't have an equation to match it. So how am I going to use it? And that's what we're going to cover here is this last little bit. So, in general, I can write, just like change a base, I can write anything that's growing exponentially using this little exponential growth model right here. Okay? We have y, that's our output, how many there are after a certain amount of time, or the end amount. We have a, we'll talk a in a second. We have e, that's the base we like to use for these. We can use any base we want, but we like base e. Um, it's just Euler's number. We have it programmed in our calculator. K is some constant that's different for every problem. Am I talking about the coronavirus? Am I talking about um, a murder hornet population? K is different for each one. And then T is our independent variable. It's our time variable most of How many days have passed? How many weeks? How many months? Whatever we're looking at for this particular problem. One thing I will say that when K is positive, this is exponential growth. This thing will be growing exponentially, getting bigger and bigger and bigger. If K is negative, that's exponential decay. It's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. Um, let's talk A real quick. I kind of left that off to the side. If I want to plug in a zero for T, 
zero for t would mean the time element in my independent variable is zero. That means I just started this. I just started the stopwatch. We just started collecting this data uh, to begin with. This is how many. So if I plug in a zero, k times zero, it doesn't matter what k is, that would be zero. e to the zero would be one. And then a times one would just be a. So if I plug in a zero here, um, that's like our y-intercept, uh, my value that gets kicked out will just be a. So this a value is how many things there are, cases, animals, bacteria, when t is zero. So that means to begin with, a is the initial amount, y is the final amount. So there's what all of our variables mean. We can write any exponential growth model using this little formula here. Um, when we finally get our formula, a will be some number and k will be some number. Y will just stay Y. That's my dependent variable. That's what it kicks out. E is just Euler's number, some constant. And then T is our dependent vari independent variable. Apologies. That's, that's how much time has passed. We need A and K for these problems. Okay? So let's try a couple with these. Let's see how it goes. And then we'll call it good. I think I will only do the easy one. We'll save the difficult one for a different video. All right. So here's the problem. The moth population. Didn't have a lot of moths in Arizona, but apparently we do here. Moth population can be modeled exponentially. Stop. As soon as I know something's growing exponentially, I can use that model we just saw, y equals ae to the kt power. There are 15 moths to start with. I just told you the a value. And three days later, there are 45 moths. I just gave you a point on this graph or whatever's happening. I'm giving you a data point. If you plug a 3 into my formula, it will kick out 45. Okay, so finally it says, find an equation that would model this population and then figure out how many moths there are after 21 days. This is a lot like some of the y equals mx plus b problems you guys used to do in algebra 1 and algebra 2. Like, I, you would be given enough information to find the slope, and then once you found the slope, you would use it to extrapolate. And that's our word for, like, figure out what's happening in the future. That's what we're going to do here. I gave you enough information to find a and k. And then once you have A and K, you have the formula, and you can use the formula to predict something, to guess something, to calculate something. And that's what we're going for. Okay. So let's check it out. Moths are growing exponentially. Check. There are 15 moths to begin with. That's A. Check. There are 45 moths. That's what Y would be, how many moths there are, after three, whatever I said, days it looks like. And then E is just E. We put all this stuff where it belongs. There's only one variable. Variable K. We can find what that K constant is. Um, if they're growing, K should be some positive number. The bigger K is, the faster they're growing. Um, from here, we're just solving an equation too, by the way. This is what we just got done taking, or you guys are going to take your quiz on here in about two hours. But to solve this, I would divide by 15. Check. Next, I could write it as a logarithm. Or I could take the log of both sides. We learned that there's two different ways, whichever way you're comfortable with. I'm going to take the log of both sides, but I'm going to recognize that the base here is a base E. So it makes sense that I should take a log with a base of E, which we call the natural log. So if I took the natural log of both sides, natural log of 3, and natural log of E to the 3K, the natural log of E, that just cancels it with 1. That goes away. So we're just left with 3K, as long as I use the natural log. If you use a different log, uh, you could still solve the problem. It just wouldn't cancel right there. You'd have an extra division thing to do, division step. From here, I'll divide by 3, and I get what k is. k is 0.366. I round it. Obviously, this is an irrational number. Uh, if I plug that back in where it goes now, like back substitute, now we know the slope. This is not really slope, but now that we know this value, I have an equation. So now it's kind of like the Mr. Edwards subscriber problem. I, I have this equation that will model the moth population where t is how many days have passed. So the second part of the problem said, how many moths are there after 21 days? Okay. I go into that formula, I plug in a 21, and we're done. Yes, I know it's all so good. 32,665 moths, we are, we're mathing, we're using these ideas. Okay. I'm going to cut, cut this one off here. There is one other video where it's a little bit tougher. On this one, I told you how many there were to begin with. What if I don't? What if I just pick up and say, look, how many moths are there today? Okay, well, how many moths are there in seven days? And then we can use that data to figure out, well, how many moths were there to begin with? 
and then how many are there after 150 days, something like that. So um, I'll cut this one off and then come on back to the difficult one and we'll be done.